Welcome to an installment of P. Sam's Arts and Crafts. Now, I say Arts and Crafts instead of Tinctures and Edibles Emporium because we're not making any tinctures or edibles today or anything along in those realms, but instead we're, we're doing a craft. So for these, let's say another division is a P. Sam's Arts and Crafts. We're going to make some cannabis infused soap today. Now I'm sure you're thinking soap, you know, how how does that work or does it even work? Is, you know, is it all your imagination or, you know, what what good is it? You just wash it right away. You know, well, let me tell you, as a uh, as a person with severe chronic back pain, thanks to uh, some rods and other hardware that have been installed in my back and in each elbow and a couple other places. So, uh, you know, in the morning is, is really a, a rough time for me getting, uh, I, I hurt more after I get out of bed than I, than I ever did before I went to bed. It, it, it hurts me to lay down and stuff. So, Anyway, when I get up in the morning, I always, you know, I, I, I have to get in a hot shower. Uh, no matter what, it loosens me up and, and gets me able to get through my day. And, uh, you know, that was, was all, all in good, but, you know, I would, you know, it still hurt a lot after I got out of the shower. I might be able to move a around a little easier and stuff but it you know I was still starting out my day in a lot of pain so I, I I got this idea and I just figured what the heck I was experimenting anyway with with topicals my my pain cream video falls within the the domain of P. Sam's arts and crafts by the way this is in the in, in, in the same the same sort of thing, and so I was you know just I was working with you know deriving new topicals and, and various things. So I figured now what if I I wonder what soap would do. You know I really really didn't think that there'd be much of anything to it, but you know I was I was experimenting. So I said what what the heck you know and and of course it helps that. These days, you don't have to make your own soap from scratch, you know, with lye and and all of that sort of thing. Like, like my my relatives and my my mom used to do in, when I was a child. The big old blocks of the size of a brick of of lye soap. You know, no, we, we don't have to do that anymore. You can you can do that if you want, but you have to use use temperatures that are are really higher than what what you'd want to use for for soaps. I mean, not for soaps, but for cannabinoids. So, what we what we we do here is we buy melt and pour soap. This is I, I got this from Michael's Craft Stores. That's a, a two pound block. We use that. We melt it down in a rice cooker. And then we add our in infused oils, and and it's like a five percent of the total weight of your your soap. That's how much that the soap will will hold. So I've I've got my my blended oils already mixed up here, but you'll be using your oils. Then I add uh, some couple of essential oils I don't have those out here just yet and other than that the rice cooker I use a little bit of food coloring uh, it's gel food coloring it does not stain you <laughs> if 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 you use it in a in a soap uh, like a, a lot of old dyes from when I was a child would you know, it would turn you blue or green or or yellow or whatever and then for our mold all we use is a loaf pan 
This loaf pan will hold just right at two, two pounds of soap. And then you just pull it out. I'll wrap it in, you know, put saran wrap in here so that it'll make it for easier cleaning. And then all, all I need to do once it's cooled is just pull it out by the plastic wrap and and set it on my my board for slicing. Now we've got that out of the way. I just want to show you how we're gonna you can use any amount of soap you want if you've got a you know you, you can buy molds at, at you know, online at Amazon or or anywhere or go down to uh, to Michaels you know and you can get some individual bar uh, molds and, and things you, you can get stamps and you know make impressions in your soap you know, various sorts of things. You can get pretty crafty with it if, if you want. I tried all that at first, and I discovered I wasn't really good at the artsy-fartsy kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I just can't do that anymore. So, well, the first thing we you, you want to do when you're, when you're making your soap is to weigh it. So, today, we're going to be using this whole block. A whole two pounds and that will fit just right in there so I'm gonna weigh it up and this two pounds of soap is 907 grams okay now I'm gonna place that there and then let's put this this scale somewhere back out of my way My lab table here I guess you could see so the next thing we'll do is is we'll cut up the soap however much you're using you know cut it up into into smaller chunks and then place it in your your rice cooker they they, they also call them soap makers you know but it's really a, a rice cooker you know, with a new name, you know, a different name put on it. You know, so they could probably, ch you know, charge specialty prices for a common item. Anyway, the, what you do, you want to want to kind of break it down into pieces like this. Do that for, for however much you've got. And then toss it in your in your rice cooker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the rest of this and get it all set up in the rice cooker and then I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, the I've got the soap cut up. And placed in the soap cooker. It's actually our rice cooker. Or soap melter, I guess you could call it. And I've got it plugged in. As you can see right now, it, it's on warm. However, we're going to turn it down to cook. And we're going to place the lid on it. Until we notice that it has started to to melt you know when we you know maybe you know we get about halfway up you know then we'll take the lid off and and start from there now I had had mentioned the oil blend uh, and use five five percent of the total weight of the uh, the soap base that you're using now there's I might add this this soap base is a, is a glycerin soap base, a suspension soap base, which means that if you add, add things, you know, that are, are heavier than the soap, it, it, it helps keep it up in, in, the, uh, in the soap instead of all falling out. However, we have oil, so it's, it's, we're not worrying about that. So, but nevertheless, this, uh, and it's 
shea butter, shea butter base, uh, glycerin based shea butter. I guess that's the the style. They have goat's milk. They have oatmeal. They have you know clear. They have various kinds for whatever you should should want. Okay, so so we use five percent of the total weight of that we used with the with the soap. So for our oil, five percent that gives that makes it forty five grams. Not milliliters, but grams. So I I just place it on the, the scale and and it's a blend of oils. It's almond oil, which I have nearly used most of, and coconut oil. Both have been in, infused with, with cannabis. And anyway, I mixed half and half of each, about, about 22, 20, you know, one, actually one got 22 and one got, got 23 grams. And, uh, mix it together. You know, and it's it's ready to go. And then I don't want to complicate things, but I added a little additional CBN oil and uh, RSO, and that's why it's it's so dark. I don't know whether that's going to make a difference in the color of the of the soap, but it's not going to make any difference in the soap itself. So. As soon as this starts uh, melting down enough to to see, I'll be back. Okay, our soap is beginning to melt. It's uh it's up to about here. So I'm gonna start breaking it up and stirring it. It melts pretty, pretty quickly from here. As you can see, it's it's melted down quite a bit from where it was when we, when we started. And you can see the. Maybe you can see. I don't know if it's close enough. You can see the the molten soap here. stirred helps otherwise once the lids off it's on the, the top now the reason why we keep the lid off at least I think the reason why is is so that it it doesn't get too hot we really don't want it to get up much more than uh, 160 degrees or so after that it starts uh, affecting the properties of the of the soap And by stirring it around, working it around, that it gets it to melt quicker. So I'm going to finish this up and I shall return. There's not too much left to do. Okay, all the soap has melted, the soap base. You want to make sure that it all the it, it's completely melted, no little little chunks whirling around in it or, or anything like that. At this stage it's about 145 degrees or so according to my uh, IR thermometer. So at, at this stage we're going to pour in our blend of infused oils and then we're going to stir that around. Yeah, it looks kind of gooey, doesn't it? Now you figure now how in the how in the heck is all of that going to uh, all that oil on the top? How does that how does that work? How's that all going to blend in? Well, we're just going to let it let it heat for a little while longer. We're going to continue to stir it. 
And in the meantime, I have already lined my my loaf pan, my mold, we'll call it, with plastic wrap. And as you can see, as we stir, the oil slowly begins to dissipate, very slowly. We'll let this continue to to heat like this for not much longer and then I'm going to unplug it and then start letting it cool. As it cools more the oils will will meld in more. But as you can see it's starting to work its way in. Not nearly the same gob we had when I first poured it in. There we go. Okay, now that we see that the oil is beginning to blend in, we don't need to keep it cooking. So we're going to turn it off and as you can see the warm light stays on. If you're, if you're working with oh, multiple modes or you're wanting to do various things you know and you, 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 you just want to ladle it out then oh we got, looks like it's hot. See a little bit of steam coming off of it. Yeah, right around 164. That's really as hot as we want it to get. But anyway, if you want to keep it warm while you're while you're molding out, you would put the lid on it, turn it to warm, and put the lid on it. That'll keep it warm and and melted so that you can you can use it for whichever mold you want. But we don't want to keep it warm. I'm just going to pour it in this one big loaf pan. So I'm going to unplug it. Okay, completely unplugged. So we'll just keep stirring it a little bit until all of that oil it'll cool down a bit. Once it gets below 150 then you can go ahead and, and put in your your essential oils. Hotter than that, and you you lose a, a you know a, a lot of the, its effectiveness. Now, often with my soap, I don't really use a, a lot to scent it coming out of the you know the shower. You know I don't yeah you know, not you know like a deodorant bar. But the, uh, the cannabis is antifungal, antibacterial, so it, it, it actually works well as an antiperspirant through, throughout the day. It doesn't mean you're not going to continue to sweat, especially if you live in a place like I do in Arizona where it's, it's already been up to 108 degrees this year. It's the first early May. So... Anyway, uh, I was a little concerned about the the dark color of the oil, maybe tinting the the soap enough that it wouldn't take my colors very well, since it's similar. But this is this is going to work fine. As you can see, the oil is getting pretty well mixed in. I'm going to let it sit here for a moment and we'll see how much still comes up and in the meantime while we're checking that the color I, I use I make for some reason well when I first started doing this I was using the various colors to indicate the formulation of the soap I tried various formulations and and I've stuck with the original eventually but 
for this you know for this particular one you know I have I, I liked it I didn't want it a solid color so I I liked swirls so I used drops of green and, and drop, drops of blue and then just swirled it and that was my bar. Sometimes, you know, it would I'd kind of swirl a little too much and I'd wind up with a full turquoise. But that's just m me. You know, this I I you know, it it seemed that a solid color was kind of blasé, you know. You know, I wanted something to be a little little different. I could buy solid color soap from Dial and all of those folks. So you know, I, I, I get a little bit of a, a, a swirl. It becomes turquoise, but it, it has a bit of a swirl. I've pretty much used, used blue and, and green. I've, I have used others with this recently, but not too much. Okay, now, you want to keep stirring this and not take out too much time talking like I did. Because as you see, it will skim across the top since the... The heat is off and it's exposed to the air. We still got a little bit of oil making its presence known here. Just want to get all of that out. Or not out, actually, but, but blended so that it doesn't come out, float to the top after you've, you've poured it out of your, your mold into your mold, I should say. And as it slowly cools, it'll start to, to thicken a little more and that will keep the oil suspended. like we're down to about 155. Then we'll do a little bit more stirring. It does stay pretty warm in here for a while. I can still see steam rising off of it. I'd say that's looking pretty good now. blended still got a few degrees to cool yet I uh, wanted to to let you see how this oil did eventually work its way in See, there's nothing left on top of it. I'm uh, going to be back as soon as this is cooled down to the temperature and we're ready to add the, the uh, essential oils. Alrighty. Once it started cooling, it cooled down rather quickly. It's at about 145 degrees now. So at, at this point, we add the essential oils. Now, I normally use use tea tree because it, it's good for aches and pains, and uh, it's an, an okay scent. But it's I haven't been using enough, you know, to to really scent it up. Uh, today I'm going to use tea tree, and I'm going to go for a little hippie scent. See whether or I can get a little scent out of it. So I'm going to use some patchouli. So I'm going to use. I get about ten bars. I'm going to use, I think probably because patchouli is a base and it, it, it smells to high heaven. 
I'm very lingering. I'm going to use 15 drops of that in, in here. Don't ask me why. It's just a number I pulled out of my hat. And then I'll use 25 of, of tea tree. Uh, you know, I'm, like I say, I'm not really going for a heavy scent here. I'm basically using these patchouli is great for aches and pains and, and all sorts of skin issues. And that's another thing this soap is good for is if you have it, skin issues, it can help with those. So any, anyway, before it starts getting too cool, I'm going to go ahead and, and put in these. Let's see if I can count. I'm not going to count out loud, though. Okay, come on, two. Okay. like we got an extra drop in there but that's okay didn't want to come out there first Twenty-five. Okay, so we have that. Let's stir it in before it gets too cold. Now the soap will start setting up around one thirty or so in in the one thirties. So we're very nearly finished with it now. And in, in, in fact, let's check the temperature. Okay, down to 142. 140. We can we can probably go ahead and pour it now. So the way that we do this, this is already off want you know you should probably use gloves or or something like this but I've got neuropathy in my hands and I don't feel pain very much so I'm not going to use this Let's get here this a little better in the way here okay so we've got everything in here now let's take our soap paddle out and I don't have any place convenient to set that darn it I'll set it over here on on the lid okay now I am going to place 10 15 15 drops of each color of a food dye in here one, two, three. Sort of spread it out. Eight, nine. Okay, there's fifteen. Now I'm going to use the same with the for the blue. Okay, now, for the fun part, I'm going to take this stick, like that, ta-da, pick it up, move it out, pour it in, 
Whoops. Hope I didn't spill much. Okay. There's the soap. And there's my swirls. And that's all. Let me get a little swirl here, a little swirl there. And I'm finished making my soap. Even though I did spill a little bit, I didn't spill much. And that's all she wrote. You know, you may want to, if you decide to use a rice cooker like this, you know, you can always melt it in the in the microwave too. And you know, there's various various. There's, there's a lot of websites on online where you can you can get information on how how to do this. Uh, but this this will take. This will take a few hours for it to cool down, so I can pull it out of here. Then I'll I'll cut eight eight bars out of it. Now the the way that I use this, you might you know wonder you know okay you're going in the shower and you're you know you're just going in there and you're just washing washing off and you know you you come out. So how can it really make that much of a difference? Well. The way that I use it and the way that others have used it that I that actually feel it you know and you know it's going to depend on your level of pain and you know and what kind of pain it is and just a, a number of, of, of things that you know will decide whether it works for you or, or not but I get in the shower you know and and then as I'm soaping down I, I get out of the stream of water. I just soap everything down so that it's it's sitting on me during that period of time and and soaking up. You know, my pores are already open at that at that point, and it it allows you know whatever's in there to get in and 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 help relieve the 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 pain and. The, you know, relax the muscles even more than the uh, than the water does. Just to to show you how how well it works for me, I first of all I I haven't bought or used any store soap in well over three years. I just don't don't need it, don't want it. This works works great, you know. And the other soap I still hurt when I'm when I'm finished. So I you know I I, I get wet. Then I I step out of the water and I soap myself down real good. I let the soap sit on my body for a, you know a couple of minutes maybe. It's not a lot, but it's enough. You know, do I, I think probably due to the pores being all you know open from the uh, the heat already, and it 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 seems to make a difference. Then I then I rinse off. You know, I, I also use a, you know, a shower brush to make sure that I get it everywhere. But, you know, it, it, it works great for me. I have other friends I've given it to. They don't, you know, haven't had, you know, very, they've had little aches and pains, but, you know, like specific pain areas. And, and it, you know, they said that it didn't work for them, but they just got in and out of the shower. It's just like using regular soap so you know if if you you want to give it a try you know buy yourself some some uh pour and you know melt and pour soap you know from a craft store or online or wherever it is cut off a few chunks of it melt it down and uh you know add a little bit of a uh, oils no, no remember no more than five percent of the weight of the soap should be in in oils and you know, give it a whirl. You know, pour it into a mold. You know, even if you you make a mold, you know, out of a heck, out of a mint can or something like that. It's it's on on important. You know how you do it. You know, it's a, it's a very flexible how you can do it. But anyway, that's uh that's my soap. I hope it hasn't been too boring for you. I hope it. Turns out good, <laughs> too. <laughs>
not just the soap, but I mean the video. And it's always a challenge with me, you know. So it's a, again, it's, it's easy cleanup, and that's what I'm going to get around to doing. I ran out of my soap this morning. I probably have enough that I could have gotten by tomorrow morning, you know, with a bare, you know, nub. You know, would have had no soap left by the end of the shower. But uh, using it every day, to the extent that I I use each bar, lasts me about two weeks. Others, you know, may not use it as as much, but I. I have to have the shower every day after when I get up, otherwise it's it's a bad day, so you know, I use the soap too. Okay, now we're back for the very last portion of our little uh, soap making video here. As uh, if you've seen as you've seen earlier, we uh, we melted our soap, our melt and pour soap and added our uh, infused oils and a little um, essential oil and a uh, little bit of food coloring and and we poured it in our loaf pan here which we actually should call it our our mold but it's really just a meat loaf pan and so now it's it's set up it's completely cooled down And this is what it what it looks like. It's got the plastic wrap around it, as you can see. I mean, see, I got my swirls in it and everything. It's a little psychedelic. So, this is what makes the the plastic wrap so so good. You saw how easily it lifted out of the pan. You know, you didn't need any kind of a oil or anything on it. It just lifted right up. Didn't need silicone or anything. Now the plastic wrap, it just pulls right out. You know, you got got a few little places where it, it crinkled in here, but heck it's soap. It's not really gonna matter. Now I'm going to be cutting it. Let me show you kind of how I do it. I have managed to to find a, a box that's the uh, that's the size of my my loaf pan. You see, there's our there's our finished loaf of soap, soap loaf. Anyway, I'm going to place that right on here, like this, and then. What I would will ordinarily do is I'll cut off using the edge of my box here because when you're cutting through with a with a knife like this, if you don't have something to guide you that you can turn the knife in the the bulk the mass of the the density I should say of the of the uh, soap will cause your your knife to to turn out or turn in one way or the other it's not going to go straight down you can uh, you can find you can go to Michaels any craft store you know on, on online you can find soap molds that that have gaps or have uh, cuts in the, in the sides at at uh, particular intervals where I, and, and then you do you take a soap cutter it's kind of it's kind of like a dough knife and and you just slice down using using the uh, my mind is a blank right now but using the slits the slits in the side of the uh, of the mold you just it, it, it they act as guides and you're able to get a straight cut every time uh, once you you cut your your bars of soap, you want to wrap it up so that it's 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 not left out uh, in, into the open of a, open air. Um, it it will dry out and all of that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my first first bar 
just to give you an idea of what what I'm doing. I, you know, my loaf pan. You know, I I don't have I'm on a limited budget. Let's put it that way. So I I haven't gone out and gotten the fancy molds with the with the slots for for cutting. And this is my bar of soap. And I get about eight of these. You know, it's, the ones after this will be straight, but at the end you kind of get, just like with a meatloaf, you kind of get the, the bigger end. But that's really, really all I wanted to, to show you. Now the, uh, my soap making video is over. I can, I can rest in peace. <laughs> or whatever. Nevertheless, I, you know, some people think the soap is good. Others, you know, they say, hey, it's just soap, you know. So, so you know, you, if you want, give it a try and see if it helps you. It, it definitely helps me and it helps others that I know. Anyway, that's it. That's it from P. Sam's Arts and Crafts, a subsidiary, I suppose we should say, of P. Sam's Tinctures and Edibles Emporium. And from here, for now, we're going to say goodnight. Toodaloo.